That is all worthiness is. It's alignment with who you are. A feeling of unworthiness is some deviation of that, period. So think about the kind of thoughts you are thinking when you feel unworthy. Give us a statement that someone might make in the midst of feeling not worthy. I'm not good enough. So that's bogus because the source within you knows differently. So when you say I'm not good enough, you are contradicting what you really know and who you really are. So that feeling of unworthiness, what's a, another way to describe the feeling of unworthiness? Your society has come to characterize it in religious terms primarily. But what does it feel like when you feel unworthy? Give us some emotional words. Depression. Depression. Shame. 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 Disappointment. Discouragement. Guilt. So what do those emotions mean? All of them. All of those empty feeling emotions mean this thought keeps me empty of who I am because it's bogus. I'm thinking this thought that my inner being won't, won't think about me. Oh, inner being, please come over here and think this unworthy thought with me. <laughs> so what is there to do? Every feeling of negative emotion means you've separated yourself. That's too strong a word, but it will do for the example from who you really are. The only way to fill the void is to put yourself back into vibrational alignment with who you are. So you have to make some effort to try to think the way source might think about you. Part of what happens and the reason that unworthiness runs rampant is because man has distorted who he thinks God is in such extraordinary ways. He has turned God into an out of the vortex judgmental being. So then he can't please God no matter what he tries to do because everybody says that God says to do something different about almost everything. And so he has given up his own guidance system. So now he's upside down and all around. He's lost his sense of guidance. But we've got to tell you, the source within you adores you so much that when you think a thought that is other than that, you go right out of range of source. Source never stops feeling it about you, but you vibrate yourself right out of range. And then you say, I feel unworthy. And we say, that's ridiculous. Just vibrate yourself back into range. Just vibrate back into range. Well, how do I do that when I'm so terrible? Stop saying that for one thing. Stop beating the drum of it for another. Start looking for evidence of some well-being or some goodness within you. It might be buried deeply, but it is in there. Look for it, look for it, look for it, look for it. When you look for it, you always find it. Until before you know it, you feel like you are. Esther noticed right from the beginning. She would bring herself into alignment with Abraham through meditation. And then through the years, she could easily get into alignment just in anticipation of a gathering like this. And even in the early days, she would notice that when she walked off the stage and looked in the mirror back in her sleeping room, that as she was fresh from the full-blown vibration of Abraham, she looked beautiful and lovely and there was a sense of adoring self that she was not used to seeing. Because for years when she looked in the mirror, she didn't like that and she didn't like that and felt bad about that and guilty about that. She remembers looking at pictures of herself as a child and then looking at pictures of herself later after she was a sinner <laughs> and wishing that she could go back to that look instead of that look. In other words, you train yourself to stop loving yourself. But when you see anything through the eyes of source, you train yourself back into alignment. So we've noticed, since most of you have been very hard on yourselves for quite a long time, that it doesn't matter who the object of your attention is while you are loving. When you love, you're in the vortex. So. Find a child and love them, and in the vortex you'll go. Find a dog and love him, and in the vortex you'll go. Find a flower and appreciate it, and in the vortex you'll go. And once you have shown yourself what a lover you can be, then you can begin turning that lens of love toward yourself. Now, in the beginning, you love a child and in you are. You love your mother, maybe, and in you are. You love those people who are easy to love. Esther was telling Jerry she was making a lit people in her life easy to love. That one's so easy to love. That one's so easy to love. That one's so easy to love. Not that one, but that one's so easy to love. That one's so easy to love. So as you look at those that are easy to love, 
and you're in the vortex now from inside the vortex you know what we mean by that yes from that vibrational attitude now think about yourself and probably in the beginning the vortex will just spit you out because you've got different ideas different beliefs mm. about yourself but if you want to be in the vortex enough you'll get back in so you, you think of something that gets you in and then you introduce things that throw you out and then you think of something that gets you in and then you introduce things that throw you out and before you know it you will have established a vibration a stable vibration of love and when you do you'll love others you'll see the best in things you'll be a vibrational match to what is love and anything out there that is having an out of the vortex moment and a lot of people are they won't be part of your experience mm. you didn't come to not love yourself because it was your nature you came to not love yourself because you were seeking approval or appreciation from out of the vortex people in other words if everybody you knew was in the vortex you would never be trained out of it because they'd teach you what they know they would teach you love and they would teach you appreciation they would never guide you from the errors you had made they would always guide you from the things that you have done that are pleasing to you but when someone's out of the vortex I don't like your behavior and I want you to stop doing that and and don't you know you're going to be out there in the real world and you need to behave differently than you're behaving that out of the vortex person is asking you to modify your behavior to please them who is out of the vortex it's no wonder you lose your sense of guidance you say hmm. so you've asked a really big question because at the center of the discussion around worthiness is the discussion of wholeness of autonomy of alignment mm. of being in the vortex of being who i am of being a vibrational match to all that i am every emotion is about that relationship with that wholeness or that worthiness let's call it wholeness so how can i be whole stop splitting yourself with bogus thoughts mm. And when I do, bring myself back. You know what to do. You know that the manifestations will show themselves to you. It's really interesting. Have you ever heard yourself in the middle of a conversation that you never wanted to have? And you're even saying what you're saying. It's like, it's like the devil made me do it, you say. I can't believe I'm saying this, but, but I can't stop myself because, well, all that's happened is that you've gotten caught up in a vibration that is such a departure from who you are because someone holding you as their object of attention is vibrating there and your practiced vibration is not sufficient enough so they just sort of bring it out of you oh that person made me so mad you say that person just makes me so mad and what you think you're saying is I wouldn't be mad if it weren't for them drawing it out of me and we say they couldn't draw it out of you if it wasn't vibrationally present it might not be extremely active but it's got to be vibrationally present or they wouldn't draw it out of you so when you start playing that I want to be in the vortex game I want to feel good I want to be all that I am I want to see the world through the eyes of source you won't be drawn into so many of those conversations because your vibration will be more in vibrational alignment with who you really are so then what they'll draw out of you are compliments and great ideas and conversations that are leading edge and exhilarating then what they'll draw out of you is laughter and funny jokes and clever movements and motions and coordination and cooperation and gay abandon in other words it'll be the best drunken party you ever had <laughs> because you'll be in alignment that's why so many of the parties need to be drunken parties they have to drink they have to drink down the resistance they drink the resistance down so that they can harmonize on more aligned levels.